let's get some terminology in place. Those anions have extra electrons to give away, and they're looking for an atom to receive them. That atom which will receive them likes electrons, in inverted commas. It's an electrophile. The anion that we're just talking about, Nu minus, for example, that anion is giving electrons away. It's looking for something to join them to. It's looking for a nucleus with which to share its electrons. So it is a nucleophile. So those are the two archetypal labels, but I've added an extra definition to each of these because when you look at real molecules and real fragments of molecules, it's important not just to recognize what is an electrophile and what is a nucleophile, but also to recognize where in those structures that reactivity property happens, where it's manifest in the structures. So that brings us to the concept of nucleophilic centers. The nucleophilic center is the atom in the nucleophile, the chemical reagent, where the new bond is going to form. And the electrophilic center is the atom in the electrophile. Electrons will come in when that new bond is forming. So this corresponds to individual atoms in larger structures. So I should give you one or two examples. Let's take an anionic structure and a simple electrophile. So the example on the screen is methoxide reacting with a proton, and the product will be methanol. Here is the sequence of steps to properly describe this very simple reaction. First of all, draw the starting structures, methoxide and H+. And then we're going to write curly arrows, mechanism arrows, to describe the bonding change. If you look at the product molecule, we've got an OH bond there. So the bonding changes, we're making an oxygen-hydrogen sigma bond. So the mechanism arrow is going to be involving those two features in the molecule. We're going to start at the O minus position and take the pair of electrons to H plus in order to build the OH bond. This is nucleophile with electrophile, or it's base with acid, however you want to refer to it. But we have here the anionic center, the nucleophilic center, and it is at that oxygen atom where the arrow starts. The arrow is heading towards the atom which can receive the electrons. So in this case, H+, plus, which has no electrons of its own, is receiving the electrons in that arrow. And then you write the reaction arrow itself, and then you write the products from that. And you can deduce the products from the mechanism, or if you know what the product is, you can interpret a mechanism to describe how to get there. We check the charges, that's step five, check the charges. We have an anion reacting with a cation. So overall, the starting materials are neutral. This means that the product must also be neutral. Let's just extend it a little bit. Here I've chosen trimethylamine, and I'm reacting it with a proton. The pair of electrons that's available to form the new NH bond is residing on the nitrogen. It's a nitrogen lone pair. So that filled sp3 hybrid orbital is overlapping with an orbital on the hydrogen, and that process is represented mechanistically by an arrow which starts from where the electrons are, and it moves towards the atom which is receiving them. And then you write the reaction arrow and the product from that. And then you check the charges. When the first example we had anion plus cation to neutral, here we have a neutral compound reacting with a cation. So the product must be positively charged. So how do we identify which atom in this product is carrying the positive charge? The atom which has given the electrons away is the atom which now will have the positive charge. Three features represented by a mechanistic arrow. Movement of electrons, movement of negative charge. So when negative charge has moved away from an atom, it's leaving a positive charge behind. In this case, this carbon atom can't receive electrons unless something else happens. It doesn't have a vacancy for electrons, but it does have a reactive bond. So here's an example to illustrate the point that mechanistic arrows can end at positions where there is the capability to receive electrons because of another bonding change. This pair of electrons is starting in the single bond and moving out onto the iodine. So charge-wise, that generates this I minus, the iodide. This is neutral reacting with neutral. But we've decided we have an anionic feature as one of the products. So to balance up the charges, the other feature must be cationic. And that cationic feature is the same ammonium ion that you saw before.